The 2014 Signature Health Policy Forum featured keynote speaker Joe Flower, CEO of The Change Project and author of Healthcare Beyond Reform, Doing It Right for Half the Cost, and a handbook for the revolutionary, Changing Healthcare Overnight. The following are highlights from his keynote speech. National health spending is a percentage of GDP. Now, do I have to, do I have to tell you which line is the US? This is the most interesting thing. The, the right side of the graph is that nobody would be surprised, but yeah, yeah, we cost twice as much as everybody else, yeah. That's not what's interesting. What's interesting is the left side of the graph, we didn't used to be twice as expensive. We were expensive, but you know, we're the richest nation in the world, so you know, we have, uh, we're up there at or near the top of the other systems of the OECD countries, but there was this moment when suddenly it took off. 19... 83. Can anyone tell me what happened in healthcare in 1983? What would make that year different from any other DRG. year? DRG. DRGs. For the first time, we tried to control costs in healthcare. <laughs> Boom. Does this make sense? Yes, it does, actually, because we are controlling for unit costs, not system costs. In other countries, there is a single price given because there's a narrow range or because the government sets a price for, for various reasons. You can say, this is what it costs. In the US, there's a huge spread, huge. The bottom there, the bottom one is $1,514. That's the 25th percentile. 25% of the hospitals in America charge less than $1,500 a day for the room itself. Median, 4,287. The 95th percentile, 5% of the hospitals in the United States charge more than $12,500 a day just for the room. It's not nursing services, not anything else, just the room. Now what's interesting about this is our 25th percentile on most of these graphs is about where the most expensive other countries are. This and other types of evidence like this give us a sense of what the price might be if we had something like a market price, if, if somehow the price of things in healthcare was related to the cost of production and to the value to the person consuming it, as you know, in, in other markets they do. And it's not at the median of our prices. If we had that kind of price information somehow introduced into healthcare, I believe these prices would collapse not to the median, but to the 25th percentile. The most expensive place to die in America is, I'm not really surprised, it's Cedar sinai in LA in Beverly Hills, a great, great hospital, very expensive. The least expensive place to die in America is Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. It's not about quality. How can the best healthcare in the world cost twice as much as the best healthcare in the world? This is a market that is not operating. There's no market information in there coming from us as consumers going, as consumers, as taxpayers, as employers, going back to the people setting the prices and costs of things. No information going back. Now, is this about geographical variations? I mean, well, you know, Manhattan is more expensive than Louisiana. But the variations within markets are actually much greater than the variations across markets. This is how much it costs you to get an ankle MRI in Washington, D.C. Another big thing that's going to make a big difference is reference pricing. Now, reference pricing would be, for instance, if, uh, if, you, had a, if you covered a bunch of employees in the D.C. area and uh, this was part of your reference pricing program for ankle MRIs, let's imagine. You would look at that and you say, you know, there's a bunch of, there's a wide variation of prices, but there's a bunch of them that are quality places that are below $700. We're going to call that a reference price. Okay, you can go anywhere you want, but if you go to the one that costs $730, your copay is $30. If you go to the one that costs $2,200, your copay is $1,500. CalPERS, California Public Employee Retirement System, did this uh, over the last couple of years in, in California. They're the largest private payer in California, one of the largest private pairs in the country. They were working with Anthem, and they, uh, 
they thought they would start with something big that could be easily sort of carved out of the rest of healthcare. It started with hips and knees. New hips, new knees. What they found is that the price variation among the 50 or so hospitals in California that can do them at quality was from $15,000 to $115,000. When one price is 10 times the other price, one of those is deeply wrong, and it's probably not the one on the bottom because those people are still in business. So what they, they saw, okay, the median is $43,000, but there were a number of places available, and at least one in every, mar every part of the, the region that was under $30,000. We're going to set that as our reference price. If you want to get one at the median price, that's fine, and your copay is $13,000. You get it below the $30,000 price, we pay everything, dime one. All the follow-up care, the whole package. Oh, and these are bundled deals, right? They, they don't, the hospitals don't get to add in another MRI or another out-of-network uh, surgeon or anything like that. This is a bundled price. Well, what happened when they published this as their policy? Reference price $30,000, median price $43,000. The median price almost overnight fell to just below the reference price for the largest single private payer, $28,000. That really woke up the employer community across the country. This is a shift to a world in which the golden road to profitability and making good living, this sort of thing, is not piling on more costs but it's giving people better care at lower prices. That becomes the new golden road to success. But you can't have a market without, without uh, price tags. So you have to have transparency. We are right about the point where these things are maturing enough that you can say of the average person with a health plan, at least, they can find out how much something is going to cost them, usually. <laughs> Lots of caveats around it. It's maturing very quickly. I think within a year or two, you, could, you will probably be able to say, definitely, you can find out what it's going to cost you. The most misunderstood or least understood concept in healthcare is trust. We're in this crisis, and all kinds of people are trying to figure out ways to cut costs. And a lot of the things that they're doing, and they're putting in like robocall systems and things like this. In, in which they, they attenuate the connection between the clinician and the client. Doesn't work. You need trust, trusted channels of communication, for especially for those top users. Let me give you a couple of examples of this. In Atlantic City, there's a very interesting union that has the employees of the casinos, <clears throat> except for Trump's, and the employees of Atlantic Care Medical Center. So you got the nurses and the fan dancers stay, standing in the same line at CVS with the same card. They decided to put together a special care center specifically for the top 5% of their users of healthcare. And this is a team of people had a clinic and they didn't just sit and wait for people to come in. They would call up people. They had these panels of patients. They very quickly figured out who are the people who have the most problems, and they would reach out to them constantly. Every morning they have a meeting, they go through the whole panel. Okay, so-and-so is in the hospital, when's he getting out? Who's gonna be in charge of that? They have uh, things, for instance, they have people on the staff who can speak Gujarati, because it turns out an awful lot of the, the janitors and such are who speak Gujarati, and only Gujarati. So they have translators for them, and, and for Spanish and the other languages. Whatever it takes to help these people, we choose to do this, to make a healthcare system that is better and cheaper for everyone, not because it is easy, but because it is hard, but because it is doable, and because it is beautiful. We can do this to lead toward a healthcare system that is based on early care, on smart care, on trusted care, on care that is lean, that is effective, that is personal, that is available, that's there, that is way cheaper, that is half the cost. This is revolutionary.